All right. Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. Uh, you might know me from Live Keyboardist or if you've been following along uh, these past couple of weeks, we're going through a six-week series on the foundations of Gig Performer. So as you're popping in, feel free to say hello. I know we've got, uh, let's see, Thomas from Oregon. We've got some viewers from Brazil. We're so happy to have each and every one of you here. But today we are talking about widgets, um, which are really essential. Um, and the reason they're essential is because they help reduce noise. So if you've been with us over the last three weeks, you've noticed we've kind of been covering things and getting a little bit more and more detailed. We started with an overview. And then last week we talked about our visual elements. And we were kind of exploring like, how do we take the space that was once used for a timeline in a DAW and repurpose it in such a way that it really works for when you're performing live. And the way that you answer this question really does have a massive effect on sort of the things that are easy to do on the way that you work and really on tipping the scales so that you're able to get to the practicing quickly. Because the goal of live performance software, uh, like we've been chatting about, is your live performance. It's not a finished recording. So we don't want to spend all of our time preparing but different programs answer this question differently. What are we going to do with the space? Like Ableton allows us to kind of have looping clips, and that's one way to kind of deal with it, but it puts your instruments at the bottom, right? So it's still sort of prioritizing playback, and we have other live performance software that still keep channel strips, which, again, sort of left over from that DAW mentality. But here at Gig Performer, we are completely where we are. We are live performance software, and we've chosen to go with a more visual layout on purpose because it just makes more sense for performing live. Now, we were also talking a little bit about this idea of a funnel last week. Let's see if I can bring my funnel up. So this is our funnel. And the funnel is really important in Gig Performer because what it does is it allows us to kind of reduce the mental strain. So we talked about how the wiring view is kind of where you start. And you want to be able to see everything when you're starting because we need to have control over the minutia. We are building sounds. We're building effects chains. We're building setups. And, you know, in this context, we need to be able to control the details. But if we were dealing with all of those details when we were performing, we'd kind of end up with something that is a little bit overwhelming to our mind. And we want to allow ourselves as performers to really connect with the people we're performing for. I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but, you know, as performers, we we kind of are doing something uh really nice for the people who are watching us most of the time, right? I guess it depends on what the performance is like, but the people who have decided to come listen to you play have decided to give you their time and they've decided to give you their attention for whatever period you're together. So as performers, we want to take this stance of saying, hey, we are here to change things so that you're able to focus on something different than your day-to-day -day life for a period of time. So we want to be outward focused when we're performing and the software we're choosing to use and how we're choosing to use it allows us to do that to different levels. So the people who are coming to hear you can really be like, in your music for a minute. We don't want to be selfish. We don't want to be involved in our rigs and looking at our meters and focusing on all of that. Like this is an experience that we are creating for people who have chosen to give you their time and space. So it really is essential that we begin reducing the load so that we can be aware of what's happening in the room when we're performing. So our wiring view was, was what we looked at a lot and kind of looked everything, but that's where we start. And the middle view, the middle part of our funnel, this panel view where we're doing all of our widgets is where we're focusing most of our time this week. But I didn't forget because last week I left you guys all with this question. And this was the question. Was how can you use this funnel method to improve your workflow? So if you were here last week, I want to know... If anybody has thought about this, how can you use the funnel method to improve your workflow? How can you get to the playing more quickly? So if anybody thought about that and you want to share your answers, we want to celebrate with you at Gig Performer because you guys are taking the time to develop your skills, to develop your mind. We want to celebrate with you. So if you've got an answer to this question, if you've been thinking about it since our last live stream, Feel free to let us know in the comments. I love to share that uh, with uh, our fellow viewers. Um, and there's always a bit of a delay when comments are coming in. So I'm going to push forward. But if somebody does share, I'll jump back 
and we'll kind of chat through it a little bit here. But we are talking about widgets. So we got to answer the question, what is a widget? So widgets, as defined by our user manual, is this. A widget is a visual object used to control or display parameters within your virtual instruments and effects. I love this definition. I know it's really in-depth, but I have to just do like a public shout out because uh, the man who has written most of our user, user manual, uh, Nemanja, never misses anything. And having somebody like that on your team is amazing. So when we go through uh, the user manual, it's all there, friends. It is all there. So widgets are using to control and display parameters within your virtual instruments and effects. And from a practical level, really what they're doing is they're allowing you to see what is most important, right? It's the middle part of our funnel. So we are going to come down into our MIDI controller eventually and maybe see slightly less, but it's helping us to just see what is the absolute most essential. But so when we're thinking about widgets, we have to answer this question, why are they important, right? Because you can control VSTs without widgets. But I want to share a story with you because I had a very interesting experience once. I play in a lot of different settings and I was doing a show at one point where we got to like the most intimate most, uh, you know, quiet moment of the show. And it's just piano and a singer and the lights are dimmed. And we're about to just go to the most emotional part. And we're about to get to that chord. And then all of a sudden, uh, I went to make a slight adjustment and there was complete silence. My piano was gone, completely gone. And it's just sort of like that awkward moment where you're like, well, that's not good. Um, and so the guitar player who happens to have a, a good idea uh, or a good good ear was able to sort of fill in for me. So I later come to find out that um, one of the faders that I didn't intend to touch was mapped to CC7. Now, for those of you who know much about MIDI, um, CC7 can be a problem because sometimes by default that is mapped to volume. And we don't want to accidentally <laughs> silence our VSTs because then at the most quiet moment of the show, everybody's distracted by the fact that your piano has disappeared. And it's, it's a real big letdown. So why widgets? Well, because we have the ability to only control what we tell Gig Performer to control without the possibility of accidentally controlling something else. Now, additionally, you can run into some other problems. Like, for example, if you're trying to control a VST and you have two VSTs that are both using a specific uh, MIDI CC number, well, then you have a problem because you're accidentally controlling something else. So Gig Performer, in using widgets, has done you a service. There's no accidental control. There's only intentional control. And I want to also just sort of get rid of this one part of this mindset. I actually had to make this shift in my mind. So I'm sure it's going to be helpful for one of you guys out there, which is that widgets are for what you need to access. They're not necessarily for what you need to control live. I'm going to say that again. Widgets are for what you need to access. They're not necessarily what you need to control live. And the reason that this is important is perhaps you're in rehearsal where you're going to be adjusting volumes, right? You're going to be trying to get your mix right. You don't want to open your VSTs. You want to be able to do that quickly. But then when it comes time to play, you probably don't want to be messing with your volumes. And there's always a use case where you're touching volume knobs, right? but it's for things that you need to access quickly. So it allows you to focus on the performance as fast as possible so that you are able to get to the plane quickly. And so just because you're not necessarily going to move to the next part of the funnel with a widget doesn't necessarily mean that it shouldn't be included um, in what you're doing. So just something important there to uh, kind of think through. Now, um, we are going to move into looking a little bit more at the how widgets work. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of potential with widgets. Today, we're going to try and cover every built-in possibility that is not extended beyond what Gig Performer does natively. I have to say, just as a disclaimer, that there is always possibility to do more. And eventually, we're going to talk about uh, the deeper things of this with OSC control or with GP script. But right now, since we are in the foundation series, we're going to focus in on the foundational elements. So I'm going to pop Gig Performer up here on the screen. And we're going to have a look here. So what I have right now is a rack space that is empty. Now, widgets need a place to go, 
Okay, so the very first thing that we're able to do is enter into edit mode. And we'll see the widgets on the side, but I want to delay just for a second here because before we add widgets, we got to put them on something. And there happen to be a lot of panels here already. But when we click new panel at the top, this gives us four different options, right? We have a one unit panel, a two unit panel, a three unit panel, or a four unit panel. And if I click it, it's going to bring it in. And you'll have some options at the bottom just for the ability to customize things. So if, for example, you'd like it to be a different color, you can just click here and it will do that. We've got a custom color option as well if you want to get super specific. And then there are some textured options at the bottom as well. Now, this doesn't necessarily affect your sound, but you know, who knows? It might affect the way that you feel. Or maybe you want to choose a darker color so people aren't seeing as much light or whatever it is. There could be some different reasons that you might want something different. You may do different colors to differentiate different functions. Whatever's signaling your mind to really quickly zero in on what's important is the color that you should choose. And then one final thing about panels is you can reorder them. So when you right mouse click here, you can click move up or move down, and then you can kind of uh, switch the order, which is uh, just helpful, right? It's just helpful. But now we're on to widgets. So there are quite a few widgets here. And as, as we mentioned in our original definition, uh, they're just uh, little graphic elements that we can use to control things or label things. And since there are so many, there is a filter. So if we head up to the top here, you'll see we've got the all widgets option, but we can go, hey, I just want a button. And then we can see all the buttons that are available to us. Or we could go here and we could say, I just want a decoration, which uh, friends, if you haven't checked out our pre-made uh, rack spaces in the gig performer community forums, I want you to just make sure you become a member and check them out because there are some amazing uh, pre-made rack spaces where people have done just gorgeous layouts that you can download for free and use in your own setup. So if you haven't done that already, definitely make sure you head over to the Gig Performer community and check out those rack spaces. But here we are. Those are our shapes. Then we've got our knobs. We also have the 11. Um, the fact that the 11 exists is one of my favorite features. Uh, maybe that's not entirely true, but I just feel like we all need a little bit of the 11 in our lives. Um, okay. And then we also have our organ draw bars. Now, this is a free tip, friends. Not necessarily super included with the widgets. But if I drag in a draw bar and hit the number nine, it looks like the organ draw bars. I mean, talk about just time-saving things. If you're an organ player, you're like, yeah, that's what I want. I don't want to drag these in individually and color code them. Just a free tip on that one. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So here are our widgets. Now, if you're looking at all of this and you're like, okay, Brett, I see these widgets. Now, what do I do with them? I don't use them much, or maybe you use them a lot, but you're trying to say, how do I narrow in on this? I want to talk about what widgets are essential. Now, this is a bit of an opinion statement here, but I think probably this will work for most people, okay? So essential widgets, to me, volume control, metering, and sound defining effects. So volume control, metering and sound defining effects. Because if you remember, widgets are not necessarily just what you need to control live, they're what you need to easily access. So I wanna see my levels, I wanna be able to see and control my volume, and then I wanna be able to use my sound defining effects to create as many variations as needed. So that's kind of where that those three things come from. And now that we've talked about this for quite a while, let's build it. Are we ready to build it? Here it goes. I'm going to pop this up on the screen. So make this big. I'm going to head over into the wiring view, which is where we always start. And right now, all I have is this eight channel mixer. The only reason that this is here and looks so complicated is because we are live streaming and you need to be able to hear my voice. And I also need to be able to hear what I'm playing. But otherwise, you could just route this however you want. Now we're going to start with a MIDI in block. So I'm going to pop that here. And this is just going to allow us to get MIDI from my keyboard. And I'm also going to use just a default from Pigments. I know I use this every week. It is probably my favorite synthesizer to use, which is why it is my go-to. So we'll wire this in here. And holding down Shift, we can create our double uh, wires just like that. And... <laughs> sound. So 
heading back over to our panels. We are in edit mode, and I'm actually going to remove this because these are, there's so many panels here. Let's just use one panel. Okay. So I'm going to start by doing volume. So I'm going to drag in a fader. Boom. Here's my fader. Pretty easy. Now, if we head over down here to the bottom right, we've got a plugin select option. And for volume, I'm going to use that audio mixer that you saw. And I'm going to choose uh, our volume, channel one and two volume. So when I remove edit mode, you'll see I have control over that volume that quickly. Now, whether or not I want to actually use that during a live performance doesn't really matter because now I have the ability to control the level very quickly and then also maybe even use the level to set later. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and add some meters. Now, meters, uh, you got to add two because you want to see your left and your right. And you can really quickly do that by just pressing the two. So you'll see there at the top, it says drop two widgets horizontally. If I hit it again, it'll say vertically, but we want these horizontally. And we're going to go ahead and map these. Map, I don't know if that's the terminology, but map is what I'm going to say. So we're going to go ahead and click one, audio mixer, and then we're going to do uh, meter. So if I go into the search parameter, oh, it's not meter, it's level. Word slip in my mind. We'll just scroll here. Uh, yeah, meter, meter. Okay, left meter, boom. And here we go, right meter. So now, when I play, I have the ability to see the volume. And of course, last but not least, sound defining effects. So I'm going to drop in three knobs here. Oops, don't want to do that. Command, oop, here, boom. We'll do it vertically, hit three twice. And I'll do for now. And then I'm going to begin to create some mapping here. So when I go into pigments, I can click learn parameter and it's going to open up the window. And then I can choose what I want. So perhaps I want this ring to be able to be controlled. So now that's available to me. Okay. Now, there are some other things here that we can do, and we're going to go a little bit deeper in our next rack space. So widgets also have the ability to be grouped together, and I think this can be really useful in a couple of different situations. So if you are a keyboard player, you might need to control more than one parameter from more than one location. So grouping makes that really easy. Also, grouping is something that will allow you to kind of create effects by... Um, turning one knob and using widget scaling. So we're going to have a bit of a look at that. So what I've got set up here is just uh, two different patches. I've got contact and I've got an electric piano sound and some volumes set up. So when I go into the edit mode, you'll see I've got some widget properties below here. Okay, and when I go into my value, I have this box. And this is, this is an important box, friends, because this allows you to make sure that your sounds sound good no matter what you do with your MIDI controllers, right? We want to make sure that our like ability to just be successful is really easy. So we're going to set parameters that no matter what I do with my knob, it still sounds pretty good, right? And the easiest thing we can do, and probably the most essential that we can do, is make sure that we cannot go above zero. So when I open up my widget scaling and double click max, I type in 77, let's see here. Seventy point four. Okay. What's going to happen is, let's see if I got that right. When I go up, it's not going to let me go above zero. So let's see. I got it almost right. I'm at negative 0.1. I'll take it for now. So that's our first thing that can happen here. But we can actually group these together so that I can simultaneously control my piano volume and my synthesizer volume. Now, there is an option underneath general where we can go into our group and select any letter of the alphabet, and all of those widgets will move together. But there's a faster way. 
So if I select the parameters that I would like to be controlled and hold down Alt and choose any letter, A, B, C, D, all the way through E, it's going to put them in the same group. And now, no matter which widget I am using, try and say that one four times fast, both of them are going to be controlled. And this can be really helpful, again, if you want things to move sort of at the same time, or if you want things to be moving maybe in different directions, or if you need to control things from more than one keyboard, this can be really helpful. Now, widget scaling gets interesting here because we can begin to have things move in opposite directions. So if I want to be able to switch between sounds very quickly, I can come into our value the same way and open this up and just uh, switch it. So now, when I exit, MIDI uh, exit edit mode, if I move one up, the other one will go down. which could be uh, really helpful. It could be something that might make your set a little bit easier. Now, of course, there are other things that could happen when we are doing widget grouping. For example, we'll see this happen in a little bit in our, and we go to the next patch. I could just have one knob that chains between whatever effects I want. So the, the ability to use these is pretty limitless and depends kind of just what you need for your individual setup. But what it does is it means that you're not controlling multiple parameters at the same time. So we've just covered a lot of ground. We've just talked about a lot of different functions. We still have more, but I do want to pause here. If you have any questions about widgets, throw them in the comments. I'll pull them up. We're going to answer them. Um, and of course, if you don't have any questions, that's totally fine. You guys can't see it right now, but I actually do have a uh, David and Naboja both with me um, in the room right now. So if there are questions that need to be answered about widgets, uh, throw them in there. We definitely want to uh, make sure that your questions are getting answered. Um, in the meantime, let's go back to our setup here. So we've got the ability here to kind of map these backwards. And something else that we have, this little known thing that I actually just discovered, is we can actually use uh, our labels to sort of pull in values. If we want to see things that are done a little bit differently, we want to see things uh, bigger, um, then we can create a way to do that. So oh, it looks like we've got a question popping in. Let's see here from Glenn. In the edit MIDI, here, let's pull it up. In the edit MIDI message pop-up, the drop-down for changing the CC gets in the way of the info about that number. So Glenn, I'm going to say this. That may be true. I want you to move away from thinking about the info in that number, and I want you to move towards thinking about using whatever numbers happen to be convenient to control whatever parameter you're trying to control. Because the power of widgets is that the CC numbers start to become a little bit less important. Um, and I think that's something we need to free our minds from a little bit. We're no longer thinking in the old context of how can I use CC numbers to control things. We want to move towards thinking, how can I map to widgets? Because And then when we get to... Um, starting to change rigs or moving controllers, um, we get into a bit of a funny situation here. All right, Alex has a question. My widget for organ slider is opposite. I have it assigned to my Hammond. Yeah, okay, let's let's do that. That one's, uh, that one's built into Gig Performer. Um, let's see here. Well, let's throw some draw bars on the screen. So we'll get rid of this. Boom. Holding down the number nine drop them in. So when we go into map here, there is a button. Let's see if I can find it here. Well, okay. First of all, you can just hit reverse. If I'm remembering correctly, there is a way to do it some other way, but okay. This is the heart of it, friend. You can reverse it. So uh, I'm going to map this to um, a slider, a fader rather. And I guess you can't see my fader, but Basically, because I have switched this number here, when I'm going up, I'm getting up, and when I'm going down, I'm getting down. Does that, does that answer your question? Let me know if that makes sense. So you can flip, um, you can flip your values so that you're getting an opposite response from your controller. Um, 
And that is built in by default on uh, Gig Performer. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Let's get back to where we were. Um, okay. Boom. Can't see screen. That's probably important. All right. One more time for you, Alex. Uh, my fault. So let's drop in these draw bars. Okay. So we have nine. So when we go here, I just see your message in Bosha. Okay. So when we go here, we have the ability to, uh, to flip these values uh, just by clicking reverse. So what you map should be flipped. There's another place for this. Naboja, do you do you know where the other place is? There's also inverse invert MIDI input. Um, here it is. Uh, invert. So this button here will flip it for you. This is actually what I was looking for and thinking. So if you are using uh, a MIDI controller and it's sending backwards, if you click invert, it's just going to flip it for you. Um, so that is what I would do with that. Let me pop back to the comments here. Yeah. So, so that's the solution. That's the solution, Alex. Um, if you are having an issue with your organ sliders being opposite, clicking invert will, uh, will fix that for you. All right. So popping over here, we're going to head over to our rack space from last week. And perhaps you remember this, but we were talking about setting us up for success, right? We don't want to have the ability to do something that makes our songs sound bad. We only want to have the ability to do things that make our songs sound good. And so setting ranges can be really helpful. So I'm going to head over here and this knob, oops, this knob is controlling my step bass. <laughs> Uh, but in certain situations, in certain, uh, like if I move it too open, then I lose my step. So I really want to make sure that I cannot open this so far that I'm unable to move, uh, you know, like I lose it. I don't want to lose it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pop in here and I am going to show you how to set some ranges. So if I open up my plugin, you'll be able to see, let me put this on the screen, uh, sort of where this is jumping from. And I'm going to hold down this key and I'm going to move this. Now to me, it stops sounding good about here. So if I go down here into the value, I'm going to see that my widget value is 29.7 and that's what I'm going to set this at. Now, 100% of this control is going to control just what sounds good, okay? Now, it kind of sounds a little funny on that bottom end, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click in here, I'm going to open this plugin, and I'm going to say, how low is too low? Well, this sounds good. So what is my current value? 37, scaled value, so I'll pop this up. I'm going to bring it up. And now what's going to happen is I'm not going to have the ability to go to a place that sounds bad. This is one of the ways that we can kind of use widgets to set ourselves up for success. Now, widgets, of course, they are meant to be mapped, but they don't necessarily have to be mapped. Um, but I want to show you how easy it is to do the mapping inside Gig Performer. So we've got a couple of options here. Now, something I want to show you is this dialogue because this is fantastic. Now, I use the Novation Launch Control XL, and I think the Novation Launch Control XL works really well for me just because of it, the, the size of it, really, and sort of the layout. But what I've been able to do is label it in the Rig Manager in such a way that I don't need to use it in order to learn parameters. So when I come in here and I have this opportunity to map, I can just choose what I want. So 1.1 is my shorthand for the first column, the first row. So if I click on that, I will now be controlling from the first column and the first row, which was with literally no actual manual mapping, which is a really nice feature. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. If I click learn, I can also move any fader. And you'll see it auto-populated. I moved fader two. So Gig Performer knows what's happening. Now, why is this important? 
This is important for a couple of reasons. The most important reason, like the, the real primary reason is, is that stuff goes wrong. And we want to plan to not be caught off guard. So you show up at your gig and all of a sudden you have to use somebody else's MIDI controller, right? Well, now you have to remap everything. Well, not actually. Because you've decided to use widgets, you can go into your rig manager and reassign those things. And Gig Performer is going to know which widgets to control on your new rig. This actually happened to me the other day. Um, so it is preferable to do this. Now, in a world where we were still using MIDI CC numbers, um, you would have to either reprogram your controller in order to do that, sending the right messages, or you'd have to remap. I mean, it'd be a hot mess. So widgets are also kind of removing that potential for things to go wrong um, in using this setup. Okay. Now, there are some other things I want to show you about labeling that is very cool. So we have some options here. I'm going to make this big, which is going to ruin the layout a little bit, but I think it's worth it. So you'll see here, this is the step base volume. And as I move it, it's displaying this volume underneath, right? But perhaps you don't want it to do that. <laughs> like perhaps you just want to see what it is and you don't care necessarily what the actual level is. We've got this toggle button here that's going to allow you to hide that value because maybe that's distracting right? Maybe that's something that you don't want to see. It's giving you a little bit too much mental load. So you can remove it. Now you could be in the opposite situation. You could be saying, hey, I actually always want to see it. And so if you, you go in here and you create a custom caption, what you can do is you can use these brackets and type the word value. And what that's going to do is it's going to display your value all the time automatically, which is a really nice way to just say, hey, this is what it is. I don't have to be looking for it. I don't have to see to touch it in order to see it kind of populate. Um, and what's also really nice about this is you can do it from a tape, uh, from a label. Um, so if I were to, I'm going to make this a bit smaller just so you can see this. If I were to go in here and create a horizontal label, I could then assign this label to a mixer. Um, I'm using hippie mode. Yeah. Hippie mode is awesome. Um, so I can assign this to uh, audio mixer eight channel here. And then I can say, I want this tape to be assigned to step based volume. And what do I want it to say? Well, I want it to say the value. Now I have this tape kind of showing me what the value is, which will then allow me to say, Hey, I actually want this to just be empty. I don't want this to say anything. And now I've created a way that I'm able to, oops, should turn off hide temporary value. Now I've created a way so that I can see as loud as I want, uh, see, or as large as I want rather, the level, all right? So, oh, we've just got a tip coming in. I'm gonna actually bring this in. Now, if this is who I think it is, um, we have uh, some, let me pull my face back up here. If this is who I think it is, which Nabucha is, is uh, giving me the head here saying, yes, um, he, uh, there are rack spaces created uh, by this gig performer user that are awesome. So again, make sure you're going over to the community forum, get your hands on some of these beautifully um, designed rack spaces. So you can also combinate the value tag with your own text, volume, colon value. Yeah. So let me demonstrate actually what that looks like. Um, we'll pop here over this way. So if I wanted to have this happen here, exactly like you displayed, boom. So now I know uh, exactly what it is. Um, and there are some other ones. There's also the rack space label um, and the variation label, which we will potentially look at. Um, I got this cool face. I want to bring it on. Thanks for sharing that tip. Um, okay. So um, here's the other thing that's kind of nice about, oh, I'm jumping, jumping around here. Yeah, okay. So here's the other thing that's nice about MIDI mapping. I don't want to miss this. You can just label your own mapping, which I don't know any other program that does this. Maybe there are. I don't want to say this is the only one, but having this ability is really nice. You can say, hey, I want this to be mapped to whatever controller it is, whatever type of message it is. Boom, you label it. Boom, you like the channel, whatever it is, you click OK, and it's mapped. So you kind of have the ability here to map multiple different ways and control multiple different ways. Now, 
when we go back to our regular you know, view here, our panel view when we're not in edit, these sort of become tools to create variations. I can adjust these things here and depending on which variation I'm in, I am getting a different variation of that sound. Now, if we go back to what we were saying earlier, these widgets aren't necessarily for what we need to touch live. These widgets are for what we need to control during rehearsal and maybe also for what we need to control live. So doesn't necessarily mean you're touching it when you're playing, but now you've created by using the ability to uh, alter widgets, by using the constraining abilities, the widget scaling, anything that you do is going to sound pretty good because you designed it that way. So you're kind of setting yourself up uh, for success here. Now, I'm only going to do one more Rackspace demo. So we've got both co-founders literally here right now with us to answer any of your burning questions about widgets if you have them. So go ahead and pop them in if you do. Um, we've got Glenn saying, this is exactly what I needed. Awesome. So happy that you're getting some value, Glenn. And if you're here and this has been valuable or helpful to you, do make sure you click that like button. Um, we can help more people see what's going on at Gig Performer by doing that. So I want to pop over here into the global rack space. Now, we have an awesome plugin in Gig Performer called the System Actions plugin or System Actions device or block. Um, and I'll show you that back here. Um, you can zoom in by hitting Shift I. And this is the System Actions block. It looks pretty uneventful, but it's actually really powerful. So I'm going to head over here to this global rack space, and I'm going to use uh, widgets the same way that I've been doing. Make this a bit bigger. OK, so I'm going to drop in a button. And perhaps you want to have the ability uh, to turn your metronome on and off. I think this is a really common one. And doing it in the global rack space can be helpful, because then you only have to do it one time. So we'll go to System Actions, and again, search parameter, parameter name, metronome, boom. OK, so now I have the ability to toggle my metronome on and off using this uh, button. But what's cool is we can combine this with some other things. Like for example, learned this tip from Mog from Caffeine Kill. I can actually start my metronome and my clock at the same time in widget grouping. So I'm gonna go ahead here and hit the equals button because that's gonna make them the same size. I'm gonna move them a bit closer. So I'm gonna use C and I'm gonna hit the letter T to align these. So if you forget those shortcuts, they're all labeled down here. We're trying to make it quick for you. I'm going to go ahead and map this to the play button. So system actions, play, boom. And I'm going to actually make these from the same group by hitting Alt-A. So now when I hit one, both of them start. This can be really powerful if you are trying to control more than one parameter at the same time. If I leave the global rack space, you'll see I have access to this from any rack space within my gig file. So this can be really powerful here. Um, I'm going to pull my face back up. So we've talked about a lot of things here, but what I want to do is I want to make sure that, well, first of all, your questions are answered. So if you do have any, make sure you pop them in. Um, David and Aboja, if you have anything you want to add, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. Um, but you can let me know and we'll go from there. But what I want you to do is I don't want you to leave our time together and not do anything. Okay, I want you to leave our time together and take some action. So wh what I want you to do is I want you to head over to Facebook, okay? I want you to make sure that you have joined the Gig Performer official users group. And I want you to share either a picture of your rack space or what you learned. I'm going to make this really easy because we're actually going to have a post. You can share it right in the comments, okay? We want to see what you're doing because as you are growing, you're helping other people to grow. And also, as you're taking action, you are beginning to uh, learn. And you know what? I create a ton of content. I spend all day long creating content. I work with Gig Performer. I work with Live Keyboardist. I work with Learn Jazz Standards. I'm a piano teacher all day long. All day long, I'm creating content. Friends, there is no replacement for action. The only way you will ever improve is by taking this information and trying to do something with it. And if you do that enough, you'll actually become great at it. And if you do that enough, you'll actually become really fast. And if you do that enough, you'll get to the performing quickly. And if you do that enough, you'll get good at performing. There's no replacement for action, but we are here together 
trying to unpack the foundational elements of gig performer to just eliminate a couple of steps for you. Because we want to see everybody using gig performer succeed quickly. And we can't perform for you. We can't build your rack spaces for you. We can't take action for you. But what we can do is say, hey, here are the foundational elements of a program that are designed to make you succeed. And we can let you run with it. But we want to celebrate what you're doing. So we're going to have a, a post in the Facebook group right after this is over. If you learned something, let us know. Um, if you built something with this information, let us know. Um, we want to celebrate with you. We have a robust community, both on Facebook and on uh, the community forums. Um, we really want to support you. So special thanks to everybody who has been with us live today. Um, we'll see you next week. We're going to do, uh, please add. So I'm going to say uh, there's a feature request here. Friends, if you have feature requests, okay, we want to hear them. And there's a place for your feature requests. The place for this is on the community forum. So head over to the Gig Performer community forum. Let us know what you want to see um, because David and Naboja are listening. Um, we're trying to design the most effortless live performance software so that you are able to do things quickly. Um, so let us know. But uh, sometimes things get lost in the, uh, the shuffle here. Um, so... Make sure you head over to the forums. Um, okay, we've got one question. Are there differences between the core version and the plugin alliance version? Um, yes. Um, I don't want to get too uh, too thrown off here. Um, between the core version, yeah, I'm going to pull in Naboja. Let's add him to the stream. Here's going. There you go. So, so the core version, there's two plugin alliance versions. There's the plugin alliance version that comes with the subscription and then the plugin allows the full version that is what they call the unlocked. The unlocked version is the same as uh, the normal gig performer version you get from us. Uh, the only difference is the, the templates that you start with a little bit differently and uh, we do provide some content and even some plugins now uh, the PHD and others uh, which are not there with the plugin allows version. Yeah. So the, the core, the, the, the full unlocked version plugin alliance is the same. The subscribe one is only going to be able to load plugin alliance for. Yeah. So uh, Naboja, we're having some difficulty hearing you, but that's okay. Um, I I think I heard what you said. So basically, the the difference is plugin alliance has two versions. So one of them allows you to only use uh, plugins from plugin alliance, and then there's an unlocked version which can let you use any of them. Um, and then the core version, which I'm assuming you mean from Disku, um, is its own uh, thing. So it's not necessarily affiliated with uh, Plugin Alliance. I mean, you can get them in either place, um, but it's it's just its own um, its own thing. And David is popping in a link that describes the differences. Um, David also said Bank Select is already there. Um, so go ahead and ask that question in the forum or on the Facebook page, and that will uh, that will we'll be able to help you a little bit better um, there. Um, okay, uh, if we don't have any other questions, we are going to start wrapping up for today. Uh, we will be back next week, friends. Um, so make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you're on our newsletter because um, we always kind of send out these notifications. We also do a rack space of the week on our newsletter, which is great. Um, but we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being with us. We will be back next week for week four of the Gig Performer Foundation series, and we will 